One of the biggest personality guests we've ever had. Chad and Chad Ochocinco, the best football players, receivers of all time. The way I am with everybody, like, I don't have to know you personally, but I fucking know you. Extremely smart with finances and how to handle my money. A school that you're never going to fucking use in life any goddamn way. Mm -hmm. What am I using calculus? The first two years of playing in the league, you slept at the stadium. Yeah. Players now have everything. You got your gaming, you got your couches, you got blankets, you got pillows. I'm going to stay there room free. Hold on. Say hello. How I'm you Taylor. doing, Mrs. Ocho Cinco? I'm filming right now, and you are interrupting. <laughs> you have baby mama drama? I never have. We all work as one man. I don't care anything about bad bitches and all that shit. I don't want fucking models. I want fucking athletes. What'd you do in high school? Show me some fucking tape. You're right. What's your age right now? 52. You're what? 52. You're 52 no, you're years not. old. No, you're not. Check his age. You think you play one season? Yeah, easily. At with a high right, level. With the right preparation? Yes. Right. And the opportunity and the ball coming? Easy. Welcome to Bustin' with the Boys, presented by Barstool Sports. Boys, we're uh, yeah, we that's we're terrible at doing the intro part. Um, as always, you know, fucking subscribe, rate five stars. We need you to buy the merch for the boys. Keep those things going. You guys are running the train. Tier ones are fucking taking them. Tier twos, ripping them upstairs, and them tier threes are slowly chugging around the caboose, as you like to call it. You're bringing them up. You're uh, you're helping us out, and so that's always a big win. Big uh, big guest today. Huge. Maybe not the most biggest guest. But one of the biggest personality guests we've ever had um, on, on the bus, and and I'll tell you how it started from our eyes, and I like to hear it from your from your perspective. So, Chad Johnson, Chad Ochocinco, uh, however you like to to know him, one of the best football players, receivers of all time, uh, was coming into Nashville for the Browns Titans game. Obviously, a huge Titans fan, um, as we all are, and um, says, "What, what am I going to do in Nashville?" Well. Got a, he came in with the COVID mask. COVID's going down still, right? We're still rolling down those trains. So there's not a lot to do, all right? You're not a drinker. You're not going to go hit the bars like that. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? Do you like Johnny Cash? Yeah, Johnny's okay. a fucking legend. Okay, so Johnny's a legend. I'm Wait, glad you, we're on the same. Curse, I've yeah, said the F word you, three you, times yeah. already. Okay, I'm sorry. You can do whatever no, we you let want. it fly, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, Johnny Cash is a legend. Country music, solid out there. But at the end of the day, with the COVID stuff, this, this town is pretty much built on alcohol and entertainment. Take the alcohol out, boom, now you only got 50%. Right. So people start hitting you up, busting with the boys. I start getting tagged. And then Will's Will sends a little group chat text message like with the big eyes. Hey, Chad's in town. What if we, hey, what if we got Chad? What if this happens? What if that happens? Right. So I'm like, fuck around. I tweet a little something. Hey, harass the guy. <laughs> All right, make it a little more difficult for him. Will ends up sending you just an eye, little eye emoji, right? In the corner. So I'm in the you morning. send it back. Right. Now busting the boys says, now I, now I want to get in there too because we're all chasing cloud at the end of the day, right? <laughs> You're the cloud train. So I'm fucking in it. I'm in it to win it on that now. Right. You end up following Bustin' with the boys. And now look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? We're here. Not me. Hey, I have tweeted at Chad, and I know you've seen um, numerous times to get on Bustin' with the boys. Are you saying that this, most recently, this is the only time you've seen me tweet to, for you to get on Bustin' with the boys? Yeah. You're, because it's hard to see because when it's um, repetitive over and over, yeah. I yeah. can see it. Your little show more, stuff yeah, like that. Show more. But if you do it by yourself, then it, it gets flooded out with so many other people if I tweet something out. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't get you. I knew it was going to happen when you said, what should I do in Tennessee? And I knew I knew our fan base. We have a good fan base. I Because, I, again, they see me tweet at you. We've been trying to get it going for a while. And so I knew it was like, cancel Christmas. We're going to get them on this bus. Oh, definitely. And then I came in a day early. I came in a day early because I haven't been to Nashville since. I don't even know what year that was. We played the Titans. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember Pac-Man was here and Pac-Man had to cover me, whatever. Whatever year that was, like, I'm going to come in a day early so I can see what Nashville is all about. I don't I don't drink. Obviously, I don't club. I'm fine at McDonald's. I'm fine at Starbucks. And maybe right. one restaurant to go to tonight. And that's, that's pretty much it. So that's why I came in a day early. As far as, re I mean, what are you, like, just a steakhouse guy? I feel like everyone's like, I didn't find a restaurant. Steakhouse is the end, and the end category. You're in Cincinnati, so you know Jeff Ruby's. So Jeff Ruby's does rip here. It does. It's been here for a few years now. It's is Jeff Ruby's here. Yeah, there's yeah. Jeff Ruby's here. Yeah, it's a nice little place in the back room there. They got some good steaks, but there's some other st spots too. Bourbon steaks, a nice little deep piece. No free shout outs. Came you Prime. Know, guess what? Bourbon steak. You're hearing us shout you out right now. You better come with a check next time. If we fucking mention your name. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not how this thing Came rolls. Prime. We need Came Prime, Prime is solid. Came Prime. Bink bink. Fucking checks need to roll in, boys. All right, we're helping you out. But yeah, so tell us from your perspective. Um, 
obviously you said there's a lot you get a lot of mentions and you tweet damn near every 15 minutes yeah it's very impressive the shit you're putting on the on the old social media content is great content is great it is solid um but the, what, what made you think okay bus with the boys might be the right thing did you look into us well, at all bus with the boys might be the right I, thing to do. that might be the right thing for us <laughs> well, obviously will i know of will obviously so why not especially with me being in a day early having nothing to do in the middle of the day why not I okay. went to Urban Outfitters. It got me an outfit to wear today. Mm -hmm. And here I am. 40 bucks later. Why not? Yeah, you know, I love it. You're you're very thrifty. Very. You're very frugal. Very. You're on record a lot talking about being frugal. It's always been that way. A lot of people, eh, they don't like it. Yeah. You know, I think people seem to more be concerned with looking like they have it even when you don't. Yeah. And I'm just the opposite. Do you respect how frugal we are with this bus coming in? You're not really. I saw you poke your head in. You weren't really sure coming in here. Sure. Hey, shit can go down. You start. You pull in the back of where you pulled in. I don't want to, people to know where we are. You pull in this. This is a lot. A lot of things can go down in the back yeah. of a shed. You know what I'm saying? This is nice. This is really nice. I like it. We actually two months ago had a, a group of homeless men break in, and Seriously? they they just moved the couches around, slept on the the floor, turned this place into it, a soup kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah actually, yeah, I promise. They had to file a police report and everything. You should have recorded that. You didn't. You didn't you we don't. We didn't have. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if we would have saw them break in, we would have probably say, "Hey, you right. can't come here." Right. But they slept. They didn't take anything, and uh, the only thing they took is they took a box of merch, like that, uh, like that box of merch. They right. basically took clothes. I'm, and if honestly, if a homeless person breaks in here and doesn't take anything and doesn't break anything, right? Ha have a sleep. Right. That doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Clean up after yourself. This can be a nighttime, daytime. This can be an Airbnb, I guess, you know, for the homeless if they like to. That's a good one. W whatever you want to have, man. Because nothing really expensive in here. Do we keep the cameras here or do the cameras leave? The cameras were, on, hey, the cameras were here. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, the cameras were here. So thank oh, God. Oh, no, Doss is shaking his head no. The cameras leave every day. The cameras so leave what every was day. here? Wasn't there stuff here that was yeah, important? Stuff, yeah, the TV, they yeah. Took some light. Oh, so they did break things. Yeah. Well, yeah, now okay, I've rescinded my, my invitation oh. for them to do what they want to do. So, so, so hold on. But you did ahead, say ahead. you said I know of Will. All right. Of course. How do you know of Will? Oh, hey, you hear that? <laughs> hey, that's what. Hey, <laughs> hey, Loki. Yeah. Hey, Loki. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing too. What? He says, of course. Well, yeah. Obviously, I know of Will, and I, I decided that uh, I want to win. He did follow me a while back. A while back. I don't back. know what from, but when I saw it, that you know the boy was hype. And I know we'll get into your fandom in a second. That's that's oh, a big, this is a big this me. is a big time thing. Yeah, I know Will. Oh shit! I know Will. That's the homie. Oh, yeah, it's I, like I that. that. It is like that. It well, is like so it's that. kind of like you guys are doing this, and I'm a guest now. Yeah, you guys know each other like I, that. Yeah, yeah. God damn, good I for know, you guys. I know you too. Well, yeah, but we don't know each other like you guys. Obviously, know I mean, each other. It's Twitter world for me. The Twitter world, and and just the way I am with everybody. Like, I don't have to know you personally, but I fucking know you. Like, I fucking love you. I love you too. Do I know yeah. you. I don't need to know you to love right. you because when people hate you, do they actually hate? Do they know you when they hate you? No. Exactly. I fucking love you. I fucking love you. You too. are big on saying I love you a lot been to the world. Since junior high. Junior and is high. that the whole idea of it? Is like it's, it's always been my mantra. It's always been my thing, especially with the way shit, especially with the way shit is now. Yeah. It's, it's always, even though in games and clips and when the enemy in the battle of war would be mad and talking shit to me, my favorite line to piss everybody off was, dude, I fucking love you in the middle of the game. Yeah. I have matter. a sim I have a similar line I like to say. To people when I play football is I'll suck your dick. I think that's usually that's a hey, line of mine. That is, I think that's with true. the with the there's a big homophobic feeling in the right. NFL. That's and funny. so when I when I tell another player, I'll fucking suck your dick. The game is God now over for them, right? The mental battle. Yeah, but it kind of goes into a, I'll love you. That's a, right. That's, so it does. we're because kind it, of that gains me a mental edge, right? And sometimes. The game of inches in NFL, that's all right. you need. It's several inches. Much. Not several, three to five. <laughs> but yes, I know what you're I saying. I see where you're going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I love it. There is a different kind of way. Because, you know, it's always kind of like the amount of times I've been called the N-word. The amount of times you're like, you, oh, you fucking suck. You're the, it's kind of like the same verbatim. Over and guys, over. Guys, there's no creativity in the NFL right. when it comes to talking trash. And if there's one thing that uh, I've loved about watching your stuff is it's it's original authentic yeah. it's authentic yeah. and so that's been a thing since junior high yeah yeah i just, love that i love you in passing just random people twitter every every fucking morning sometimes you never know what people are going through obviously there's only so much i can do as an individual right you know so that 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 message i continuously do it just 24 7 wherever i'm at yeah outside of telling guys you love them 
what are what are some of your more favorite or some of your better lines you look back on and you're like that was a child, banger please, of course child please child please child please child please child please, child, please. Child, please. Child, please. meaning from hard knocks and it meaning based on the delivery the delivery mm. is important it's a nice way of saying fuck you right and you can use it in the workplace if your boss pisses you off and if your delivery is right and you say, man, child, please, he will never know what you're talking about. But you're able to get that shit off your chest right. without getting in trouble or having right. an HR called on you. I like that. Yeah. Vrabel, that could be. I'll tell you what, Vrabel would definitely. He would need to right hear now? this a few like, times child, for please. sure. <laughs> Vrabel would be like, what, what, what do you think, you're Chad? Yeah. <laughs> you fucking do the, he's you can barely say, you can barely say yes, thing. sir, to him. Like, don't Vrabel. don't call hey, me sir. tell him the yes sir thing you did to Vrabel. That fucking just really grinded his gears. Um, Vrabel is, for if you, I know this is the bus of the boys thing is new to you. Vrabel is a huge fan of us. Huge fan of this bus. Right. Pro, Will's one of his, got to be his top three. I don't know. It's, it's back and forth. I never know how to get a read on him. Right, right. But um, I was uh, I was working the cards on scout team and they held it up and they were like, uh, he was like, hey, um, Dirty D, like, you know, give a good look, show a little speed ball, ball, this and that. And, I, you know, I like to have fun. I, oh, y- yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, come on. Hey, guys, show speed. Like, he's like, what, what'd you say? And I'm just like, oh, I, I just said, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I bet you fucking did. I'm like, what? That, that, <laughs> that's literally all I said was, yes, sir. And then a couple weeks later, I'm preparing. I'm on I'm on the defensive side. I'm freaking doing this. And he he's coaching me up. Mm-hmm. And I just nod. Yes, sir. I got you. Like, he thinks I'm being a jackass again like I was a couple right, weeks right, before. Right. And he's like, like, don't fucking call me, sir. Stop saying yes, sir, to me. And I'm just like, oh, my God. How do you even – how do you what work do you, around this? Yeah, what am I, I supposed mean, to do I mean, unless you here? call him God, I think yeah, that's, like, yeah. really the only thing he'll, yeah. he'll be okay with. I tell him a child, please, next time. He'd tell him what? I, if Rabel calls me out in the next team meeting I'm in – Child, please. Child, please. Calm down. <laughs> he'll say, what'd you say? I said, I love you. And I'll fucking hit him with Bingo. that too, and I got a two for right there in that's my back a, pocket. That's a good mind fuck. Because I feel like if you tell a head coach, you'll suck him off. That that part, I <laughs> yeah. think that one. Yeah, no. That's probably not it, right? Don't do that. I'll tell you what, it, it is. A, it is definitely a competitive edge to do those things, though. I like that, though. I like that. You always been a shit talker. Did, did that yeah. develop in always. the league? I just I needed that mental edge. Right. I needed that mental edge, and the reason I talk shit throughout the week, obviously, people consider it putting pressure on yourself mm-hmm. because obviously, once you talk and give the other team bulletin board material, you have no choice but to go out and perform. Right. Me, it kind of it mind fucked my opponent into oh shit, you know now I got to be on my I got to be on my p's and q's. Right, just that nervousness, just that inch of you thinking is that split second is all I need. Has there ever been a time when you were like, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have. Have you ever mind fucked yourself being like, I really got to fucking, I got really got to put up. See, I don't believe, I I don't, I don't necessarily believe it. That's a fucking difficult thing. Was difficult. Think about this. Remember when I had the list of DBs before the season started. Yeah. You know how hard that is? I'm, I actually played the game of football in the NFL with the 1% that are the best in the world on All Madden. <laughs> I played it in real life on All Madden because I put a list of people in my locker that I was facing from week one to week 16, 17. I forgot how many fucking weeks there are. I got CTE. Right. But, and letting you know I'm going to beat you every down, all four quarters, and you're not going to stop me. And all they had to do was stop me one time and you get a check. That's it. <laughs> All they had to do was stop you one this time, was, and you gave them the win they, yeah, for the game. The yeah, for for that, that specific game. Not, Did anybody ever win? Check. I think that year, I think it was one, one person. But as far as completions and targets and actually getting covered and balls knocked down, fuck no. Yeah, I remember that too. He'd be in press conferences, and he'd have his little list behind him in the locker. I was all state in high school, receiver. I could ball a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I'm watching Chad Ochocinco, <laughs> uh, that's who I am in the backyard. You feel me? No, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know how you're like that uncle, and you're like, your your niece or your daughter brings home somebody, and they like play ball, and you're like, hey, you know, back in the day, I used to ball a little bit. Yeah. I oh, you that, that's you right now. Receiver. Oh, that's me right now. Right, right here. Tell I was, I was solid back in the day. I'll tell you what, being a receiver, that's, that's tough. Being, being a uh, corner is tough. Too. I mean, the whole thing's fucking hard. I think the corner is the most, the hardest position. Who's the best? Side of I agree with that. Could you play corner, did you think? Right now, probably. I do that in the offseason with some of the, the today's players. Right. So when we train together, for me to see what it is they want me to see, I actually play DB. Who are oh. these players? Tyreek, Antonio Brown, uh, Julio, Ari Cooper. So the best of the best. Yeah. It's fair. You, you could have just said yeah, the best ones, and that would have categorized all of them, Gio, right? That was fun. But Gio. are you winning? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I win maybe 
40% of the time. And that's fucking great being that I'm not a fucking... Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, you're playing one-on-one. Now, is that 40% legit or is that like, hey, I that's probably... Legit, I would have definitely... That's a legit 40% because at times I know what's coming before it comes. Right. You can just tell. Coming out the huddle, split, alignment, mm -hmm. you already know what route's coming. So I just try to guess. <laughs> so you guess. So guess. You're, you're a coin flip guy. Yeah. I like that. How old are you? What's your age right 52. now? 52. You're what? 52. You're 52 no, you're years not. old. No, you're not. Yeah, Check his born, age. I was born in 68. <laughs> he's 78. He's lying. He's lying. He's like 42. I'm not. I mean, right, so we'll look it up right now. It's Google all right. Google doesn't even fucking know me. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. They know. You're 78, what you're 42 years old. All right. You're 42 years old. Listen, that's one strike, Chad. All right. You've, you've lied to us <laughs> once on the bus already. And we're 10 minutes into this he thing. He said I'm 52. <laughs> when he said 52, I was fucking upset with myself. I'm like, man, I'm 29. Man, this man. Actually, you know what? 52, based on the wear and tear I had to take throughout yeah. the years. I feel 52 when I wake up every morning. So, but you think, you think you could still play? You think you play one season? Yeah, easy. At a with high right, level. With the right preparation? Yes. Right. And the opportunity and the ball coming? Easy. Really? Easy because teams put you in a position to be successful. Right. They put you, if I'm just saying, hypothetically. Yeah, it'll be easy. My skill set hasn't gone anywhere. Well, it could. I mean, you're 42. What about 42 your speed? now. You didn't go anywhere either. It hasn't gone anywhere. No. So you're saying you're as fast now. You're the same speed now as you yeah, were back in your day. A little slower. Hell, I was just on the treadmill running 25 miles an hour, what, four months ago on Instagram. 25 mile an hour is decent. Yeah, that is kind of fast. I mean, I mean, obviously the treadmill is making me go, but the fact that my body can maintain that for over eight, nine seconds, that means I can fucking still go. So why don't you? Why don't I what? Play. Why? Why would I want to play? Because I played 13 years. That's enough. 13 years is a long time. That's a, that's a good amount. How many pole balls you make? Uh, six. That's, I mean, that's a Hall of Fame career. Yeah, that was, that was you enough. got nine between all of us on the bus. Look at us, right? Six, three. Yeah. We're rolling, boys. Where'd you, where'd you play? Nebraska. I played in Michigan. Yeah. Yo, what's up with your wolf? Dude, yes. I, I tell you what, Will Will caught me in a predicament the other day because he's hey, like, so that what are you going to do? Hilarious, yeah, dude. that was so funny. I'm like, kind of like, face. I'm playing the politically correct, like, oh, well, you know, they need to do this. He was like, so what do you think? You should give it a hardball? And I got, I'm like, uh, 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 I didn't know what the fuck to you say. Think they, you think they should? Uh, yes. Are I you think, serious? Uh, so when I got there, it's hardball the reason, though. Or maybe they don't, they don't you, have the talent to succeed. Excuse me. It's all right. If, um, if, you, if it's, when I got there in 2009, uh, uh, Rich Rodriguez was there. And the whole time Rich Rodriguez is there, all they wanted was Harbaugh. Mm. And then Brady Hoke came in from San Diego State, mm. who's a Michigan guy for whatever. He was a deep coordinator or whatever. All they wanted while Brady Hoke was there is Harbaugh. Now Harbaugh's there. And so, and I hate to do And there's a, there's a Michigan fan at the edge of their seat right now listening to me talk because they want me to say something nice. I'm not going to. <laughs> because Mark D'Antonio, who, who was the head coach of Michigan State, mm -hmm. and that's going to hurt even worse. He gets two and three star guys. And while I was at Michigan, they're playing for Big Ten championships. They beat us uh, three to four times. Like they fucking got it done. Now you can be a four star athlete. Anyone can be athletically gifted. Right. But if, you, if you're a slappy or you don't know work ethic or you don't know what to do, then you're not going to develop into Chad Johnson or Will Compton. You're not going to develop into the guy that's going to be able to make it or have that great impact. Now at Michigan, you're sponsored by Jordan. You have, I mean, it's, you, I would say we're running, we're running away from relevance, but it's still a very relevant college. Very. It's like a five star college. It's a five star college, yeah. right? Are you, you, are you getting the recruits though? I think you're getting, you're getting better recruits than Michigan State was when Mark Antonio was there. And my thought is, is Mark Antonio took and developed those guys. Took a guy like Jack Conklin, who I played with last year. He played for the Titans. He was a first round pick. Right. Had to walk on to Michigan State. Now he's a first round pick and left early. That type of shit. That's what I'm talking about. I think if you're getting a four and five star guys, which Michigan does get, right, then then after that it's development, right. and you need to have kids excel and do and do better as you go, and that's that's not happening at Michigan. Now I don't I don't know how to coach, I don't know how to do that shit, and I would never try to be a coach. I've, Will and I talk about all the time, like Will would want to coach when he's done playing. I don't. I'm not right. trying. I'm not trying to coach. Like I want to go. I want to make make my money, win a championship, make right. some Pro Bowls, wear a jacket someday. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of shit I want to do. And then after that. I'm fairy dust. I'm out of here. But I so but so I don't know how to necessarily develop people. But if you look at that and you're such a sought after coach like Harbaugh has been, it's one of those situations where, you know, it is on the coaching staff now. You know what I'm saying? That's tough. It does kind of get on that because you're getting you're getting the dudes. Right. You're getting the guys. You know what I'm That's saying? Tough. 
And it's just, if you look at his track record, he's gone like 0 and 10 versus top 15 opponents, like 1 and 12 against top 10. Like, yeah, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a good look. It's yeah, not it's a good not look. look. And I might have got, got the stats wrong one way or another, but they just played Penn State a couple weeks ago, who was 0 for, haven't won a game all season. Right. And Penn State beat them by 10 points. So it's like, Struggling. I mean, come on. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, Where'd you play? Where'd you play college ball at? Oregon State. One year. That's right. Beavers. That's right. Dennis Erickson. We went 11 and 1. Missed, the, national, missed the chance to play in a national championship by a field goal against the Huskies. Against the Huskies. Yeah, we blew Notre Dame out. That was fun. That was, a, that was a great, that was a great year. You were only there one year? Yeah. That was a knucklehead. I mean, my story is too long. We'll be here all fucking day. Asshole. Never went to class in high school. Graduated yeah. late. Then I get to an NAIA school in Oklahoma, Lanks University. Obviously, red shirt there. Clock yeah. starts. Get in trouble fighting there. Go to Santa Monica in L.A. with Steve Smith. Right. Okay. Carolina. I remember that. Um, play one year there. That's two years down. The following year, I'm ineligible. That's three years down. How you know because of grades? Grades. School. Fair. Fuck school. I want to play football. Right. Yeah, you got to try to be ineligible. Yeah. So, of course, yeah. obviously, I get my grades together throughout the offseason or I wouldn't be able to play. Boom, play in Santa Monica the third year, obviously because I was in Ezra was the second. Mm-hmm. That's four years down, one for one. Oregon State gave me a shot. And once I got there, I didn't look back. And what do you mean by you didn't look back? Like yeah, you started taking it. In trouble, I had to take it take it serious. You started to get it, you started put to buckle school, down a little I more. Okay. You put school in a you put school in a position. As soon as to... I put school first and said, okay, I'm gonna do this first and football second, everything just fucking went smooth. And it took until I almost didn't have the opportunity to play at the next level or showcase my talent on the big big stage, I didn't get it until then. Like over and over as a fucking knucklehead. And so knowing that was about to fully slip away from your hands, that's when you that's like, what made yeah. you want to straighten it up. Yeah, yeah, straighten it up. Or my opportunity to play in general, or even make it to the NFL. Right. Slim to none. What would you do if you didn't go to the NFL? I'd probably Well, I was cheap as hell, but I would always want some nice things. I'd have to sell drugs. I'll be a a mule for the cartel. This episode of Bustin' with the Boys is brought to you by Bose, specifically Bose Sport earbuds that are designed to deliver lifelike audio and a comfortably secure fit. Guys, I wear these Bose Sport earbuds every day when I work out. I throw a little Joe Rogan in the old ears and let him motivate the hell out of me while I sweat, while I move, while I run, while I do all of it. Bose Sport earbuds stick and stay right in your ears comfortably for hours The battery lasts forever. No matter what you're doing, running, lifting, riding a bike, you name it, and these things stay secure in those ears. Doesn't matter how much you're moving or sweating. They're super comfortable, and the touch controls are easy to use as well. The acoustic ports and premium drivers make your music sound and clear, balanced, whether you listen loud or softly. They're also great for any phone calls you you might need to make. You probably saw a ton of the boys, a ton of the NFL athletes rocking their Bose headphones before the game or in their warmups or just getting in the zone and blocking out all of the outside noise. You want to know who's a Bose athlete? Patrick Mahomes. And he seems to be doing pretty damn well these days. If Patrick Mahomes is endorsing the product, doesn't have you going to buy your own pair, then I don't know what will. Phenomenal game. I want to give a huge shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was ecstatic that my boy Levante David and Dominic and Sue, my Nebraska boys, they won a Super Bowl. Um, a phenomenal game to watch. You know, it did, you know, ebbs and flows. It was insane to me that uh, the Bucs uh, held the Chiefs offense to nine points. Uh, but it's just, it's insane that Tom has won a se- seven Super Bowl, his second team, different offense, different coaches, a new team of guys that barely, bar- he barely knows. And I'm sure he was rocking those Bose sportier buds as well. So if you want to be like Patrick Mahomes, go to Bose.com slash Barstool to buy your own Bose sport earbuds. Yeah, I, I, I did. Mean, that's a good way to make money. It's tax free. I did. Yes. Um, I did watch a, an interview on you and you were talking about the circle of friends you did have growing up and how they kind of separated they themselves they from you. Let me. Let me and during I was where I grew up in Miami during that time was the dope era, the dope, the dope boys and the cocaine. Yeah. And I would be around, but when it was going down or anything that could hamper anything as far as my career or anything going forward football wise, yeah. And they kicked me the fuck out. Just from around, just just around them in general. Why do you think that? Because usually it doesn't go Back that way. Structure. People are trying to reel you in because they don't they don't want to see you have success yeah. without no, it's, them. It's so. not like that. Back then there was structure. I'm not a street dude, but there was a, there was a certain way things were done, 
for the individuals that had potential to make it out of that area. And they looked out for you. They didn't bring you in. So how did how did you fully separate from that circle? Was that when you went to the NFL? I mean, once once I left for college, obviously I wasn't around it. Yeah. But Man, I, I didn't crazy. indulge myself in that activity, though. They wouldn't right. fucking allow me to, even if I wanted to. You know, when you're young and you want to be cool, you want to fit in. Yeah. You want to do what the fuck everybody yeah, Let me do this. Doing. Let me do that. And they're right. like, they, yeah. So they saw your talent level and Listen, said, no, he can't. When the when the lights flicker, you know, the lights when it's coming on, it's, it's dimming. When the lights start flickering, they would send me up. Damn. Damn. Yeah, it was cool. <clears throat> I heard, a, I heard a, a similar thing to Deshaun Watson. Yeah. He had a, he had a situation, like, I don't know his story. This is all like secondhand stuff, but it would be a similar thing. He would, you know, be, it'd be in a bad area. And when the lights start flickering, yeah. like, you have to go home. Or if something was about to go down, they'd be like, you need to go home right yeah. now. Because yeah. they, I mean, I heard it was because they knew how talented he was and he had a huge opportunity. And dudes don't obviously want to get out of those situations. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is, that's your, that's your out, man. That's it. Those environments, the surroundings that where I grew up, or there's so many stories like that. Our only way out is sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a fucking academic scholar. Who the fuck am I fooling? Yeah. Not a four point oh. No, that's not me. I'm extremely smart with finances and how to handle my money. But when it comes to all that other shit, when it comes to school that you're never gonna fucking use in life any goddamn way, mm -hmm. I'm not using calculus. No, I, mean, <laughs> I, feel, I felt stats three like times. Algebra and all this. You know, I'm not an engineer or. Just I don't know, man. It's, it's it's weird, but I mean, it, it worked out. When you start throwing letters into math, y equals mx plus b. <laughs> I that's when I was like, well, the game's over for me. And I think that's where I've I've lost the battle. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, I enjoyed it. I try to I try to instill. My son is at Arizona State now with Marvin Lewis and Herm Edwards. He played oh, receiver wow. as a freshman. Yeah. So I try to talk to him and tell him. You know, make it easy for you. You're doing something I wasn't able to do. Mm -hmm. You actually are at a, a big school as a freshman, getting that experience of college that I never got. Yeah, I'll tell you what, ASU is great. I'm, I'm from Arizona. Oh, for real? Yeah, I'm from Cape Creek. Okay, cool, cool. But uh, I almost went. I almost went there. But I, after I saw the girls at Arizona State, I was like, I, I just can't go here. Right. Get in trouble. So I went to the opposite. I went to Michigan. <laughs> I was like, all right. So the girls, These at girls Michigan. Were weren't hey it was tough sledding out there bub <laughs> especially when you grow up in arizona you go up in arizona it's it's beach weather all the time everyone's right. go, going to the pool everybody has a pool right so everyone's got to stay in shape and so you're looking at nines going right. that's a you know working at target too and you're like she's all right and then you go to michigan and like you're like oh i'll never have sex again i guess huh. i guess i guess it's over for me <laughs> and then six months goes by and you're like well i guess you're playing roulette, right? You're zipping down the North Face jacket going, please make this a real thick right, jacket. Right, right, you know, you're right, hoping right. to God. Because like, you're going to put that North winter coat Face on. Jacket. And then, you go, then you go back to Arizona and you're like, these girls are way out of my league now. Right. Now your mind starts to change a little bit. So, but I, when I was at ASU, I, I, I went there a couple times and it was like, I was like, oh, I can't fucking go here. When girls wearing bikinis in class, <laughs> I was like, dude, this is fucking wild. That's funny. It's a different deal. Big, That's funny. Yeah, shouts to your son, man, to be able to go and do something like that. You, uh, I mean, I'm glad he's in that environment though, because he has Marvin. You know, obviously Marvin Lewis. Well, yeah, you got him. You probably, yeah, you probably have his so, number. Talk to him all the time. Is there? It's he's in an NFL environment, even though he's in college. So I know they're gonna make sure and keep his head on right. Is his is his talent around yours near yours? Not yet. You got a long way to go. But where, okay, where where he is now as a freshman in college? Was he at that talent? Where, where were you guys compared to? Right now, where he would be right now, I would be at Langston. Different skill sets, so I'm not sure. It's hard to judge. Yeah. Different skill sets. And he's a lot way? bigger than me. He's bigger than you? Six, no, he's six, like 6'3", six, and like solid. Mm -hmm. I'm still wiry a little bit. Yeah. You've always been able to run. Because you did, didn't you play soccer, too? Soccer's my first love. Right, football. because when you got out of football, you weren't you on a team? Didn't yeah. you play in a game? like? Yeah. Yeah. Were you a part of that? Yeah, semi-pro in Miami. Boca Raton FC. Soccer's always been my first love. Obviously, I didn't have the resources to play it in Miami, but... Why was soccer, how was soccer your first love over uh, over football? I, I have no idea. That is what I gravitated as a child. You know, when you're in P, elementary school, yeah. you go to P and they dump all the balls out at once. Yeah. I gravitated to soccer ball for some reason. I just couldn't play. Damn. Playing soccer in the hood in the 80s. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. Really? Oh. Um, Playing football in the street, not trying to hit cars. Stop for the car, please. Yeah. 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 Do you find yourself uh, 
uh, with all the experience you have, and obviously kids and everyone gravitates towards Chad Ochocinco because you have the facade of, you know, having fun and doing all that stuff. Do you find yourself mentoring a lot of kids who are trying to play sports and trying to keep them on? Hey, don't be, you know, lights are flickering or going down this path or that path. Not really. It's you know? hard. They ain't going to listen. You got to learn through experience. Even though the message is coming from me, I think of me at that age and hearing someone that I look up to, and it goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah. It right. Does. I mean, if you if I run into you, we have a talk. You ask a question. You know, I I give you my input, my opinion on what you can and can't do. Right. You know, right from wrong. Anyway, I knew it back then. I listen to people or the people that came to talk. That look at oh my god, that's so and so. One ear out the other. You know, you remember what they said. But I mean, I had to learn through experience and falling on my ass and having to get back up. Yeah. Um, you think it'd be easier, especially when you become a parent. I had I got two kids, and you're like. And my kids are too young, but I know I'm gonna get to the point where like, I see what you're doing. Let me help you with this, right. and they're gonna be like, you know, kind of fuck off. I gotta do. Th- I gotta go and do this. Right. You know, it's gonna be that's that's gotta be hard to see, hard to watch. It sounds like your kids gotta get head on the shoulders, though. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm lucky. I have seven. Seven said, kids. Yeah, I, I, I know you seven. have a, a, good a daughter who is very fast. Oh my god. They all might be, but I'm just saying. You know the one yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, she's extremely fast. Actually, yeah. to the point where she might be able to get me right. That's crazy. Cause well, I anything past the hundred hundred meters, she'd probably get me. And she's only fifteen. Yeah, she's a stud. He'll post her videos at track meets and stuff. And I'm yeah. just like, yo, kids she's out there good. running like that these days. Gazelles. Yeah. Not no, in my school. I have no issues. And none of them were like I was. I mean, I wouldn't even say it's a testing to me, it's just testing to it. Yeah. My mom's not playing that shit. Do you have baby mama drama? Never never have. We all work as one unit. It's good. Build it's a little all, all one unit. Bingo. I like that. That's, I'm glad around. you just said that. You fence them in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't fence in with two. That's just a gate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking at least have four to make a fence. That's a gate. That's a fucking good You know what I'm saying? Damn. I'm sorry. Good. You got to remember that one. I, really oh, I fucking just gate. said it out loud. I probably, yeah. you know, that's mine now. <laughs> Write that down. Taylor wrote that one. I said on, that. On the pod forever. Too. On the, yeah. It's, yeah. It's now, it's now on the pod for fucking ever. Oh. I'll tell you what. I, I the, whole, the whole having multiple mothers thing, it just seems... Now I'm gonna want to. I'm not stepping on territories I don't fucking know, but it does seem like a difficult track. Stressful. I see some guys, three kids, three women, and I'm like, dude, that's a lot of fucking uh, that's work. A, I like it. You know, I think about what I did. Everyone I had a child with was based on their DNA and athletic background. That's it had genius. Nothing, it had nothing to do with how fine you were or how you looked. So it was strategic. Hey, every 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 time. Hey, so it had man, nothing hey, to do. Man's playing chess. Everybody it had nothing to. Checkers. It had nothing yeah, to do with pulling out. It was strategic. I, I don't care anything about bad bitches and all that shit. Hey, I, if I wanted models, I don't want fucking models. I want fucking athletes. What'd you do in high school? Show me some fucking tape. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, <laughs> no, listen, did good. you cheer? Did you run track? Did you play volleyball? I need that DNA. I need that fucking mixture to be on point. You know, I don't mm-hmm. need the bad bitch trying to look cute with good hair. No, for what? When the last time you seen a great football player that was fucking pretty? I'm a really good football player. Yeah, you're not. You're not fucking. You're procreating. So you're really <laughs> procreating, yeah. basically, and it worked because everybody. That's, thank you. I thank you. I know that was that was Alex. It was Alex? Because, was wondering. because everyone is athletic in their respective crafts and good at what they do. Mm-hmm. So did they understand that they were getting trapped? Yes, because I, I explained that beforehand. So you, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a baby inside you because you deserve it. And it's, that's that's a horrible. It. That's a horrible delivery. I mean, that's a horrible delivery. Are you sure? But that's seduce. That's me. the gist of Tell it. Tell me how it happens. That's the gist of it, right there. I'll be the girl. I can't right now. Are you ready? I haven't done it in a while. Remember, my kids are 23, You're grown, 18, yeah. 16. Yeah, that was so long. Ago. Now, did these women have to pass the McDonald's first date test? Everybody does. I don't yeah. care who you are. Explain you explain your philosophy on dating. I mean, it's what I it's what I love. I'm already I already have money. Yeah, I'm rich. Right? Yeah, so I have nothing to prove to you. Usually, you go out the red carpet as a man trying to uh, what's the word court court. Yeah. Well, there are certain things I like sure. in life. Can you like what I like, knowing what I have to offer? What are you bringing to the table outside of vagina? Yeah, and you're an added expense. Can you enjoy this meal without frowning your face if I pull in this McDonald's drive through? Oh, you don't go inside. No, you go through drive through. That's Who's the here? first date. That Bloss, was... get your gun out, Bloss. It works. Bloss, Bloss is, is a cop. cop. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, he's a cop. Yeah, we're fired up. Just oh, shit. I have a hey, it's a tough warrant. time to be a cop right now. He's a shit. I have a fucking warrant. <laughs> <I have a warrant. laughs> 
So you don't take them into McDonald's. You're, you're going drive through. Drive through. I just the facial expression when you pull in McDonald's drive through, where they're dressed up and thinking they're going somewhere nice. I need to see your facial expression. So they have no clue they're going to McDonald's. No uh, yeah, and that's what I've done every time. Obviously now people are understand knows, right. You know, when I date after they know, and then after that, you know, you do the nice upscale restaurants and it's it's cool. You got to pass that first level. Yeah. Yeah. But, so if you're in the drive-thru, let's say where you, you take a girl to the drive-thru and you look over and she's Body like, language. She does the- she Body does language, like the, facial expression. Looks over at you like, are we fucking- Yeah, we, you won't, know? we won't be doing this again. So do you still order food or do you leave? You're like, this is it. Or do you kind of pull around? You know, sometimes they have two lanes. I order. He's still going to get his food. I, I, bet, I was going to say, getting, I bet he's still getting his food. And if she has a problem with it, okay, cool. I mean, what do you do for me? Yeah. You got a, you got a whole village anyway. Bingo. Got a squad. Right? Yeah. I mean, are you adding to my fucking plate? No. You're fucking taking. <laughs> right. And what you're offering, I can get elsewhere for fucking free. No question. Or for a premium price. But yes, that absolutely. Too. That too. My, I, I've always wondered, um, how do you enjoy McDonald's so damn much? As a, as a kid. Yeah, I understand as that. I'm just kid. saying you like every day. You know how you get in phases and you're like, oh, I need to take a break right now, but uh, I'll go I mean, back I, to I it. I do take a break. I eat, I eat other things. Poor Tropical, depending on, I don't know if they have one here. Um, Puerto Tropical. No free shout Bahama outs. Bahama Breeze. I don't know if they have Bahama Breeze here. No? I don't no. think so. That sounds like um, Miami thing. Soul food restaurants. Love soul food. Yeah. In Miami, Cuban restaurants. Love that. I love Cuban coffee. I don't drink alcohol. So anytime I have a cigar, I always have to have coffee, which is why I ask for a coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what's that? What's the place in Germantown that's like? That's what I was trying to think of. Soul food place. You sit there. It's bench style seating. You're not allowed it's to be like, on your phone. Right. It's they, like you, you go into a house. You don't know. And they, they they have, like, the best food. You'll sit there. It's unbelievable. It starts with, like, an M, I think. Yeah. I know but It's right think, in Germantown. It's, like, thing. 10 minutes away from here. You'd love it. Yeah, you should check it's it out. It's not expensive. What's the name of it? I was just trying to figure out Is right now. Is it a soul food spot? Monel's? Yeah. Monel's. Okay. Monell's. That's it. Monell's. It's, like, good? breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Yeah. They always have, like, like a, a fried chicken or, like, it, no, or that's grits. That's a good tweet. Monel's? Oh. I'm going to He said that's a good tweet. Ask the people what they think about Monel's. Well, that was a solid. I think you'll get a raving. People are, people are all about hot chicken here, too. I ate it. I don't know. It, the, Hattie B's is pretty good, but people say that's like a cop. Like, that's not the deal. You shouldn't go there. It's a different spot. But I think, I mean, I had Hattie B's one time. I ate they, it. They told me to go to Hattie B's yeah. as well. I, I saw that multiple times. It's more right? of a tourist type thing it's so, like yeah. uh, i'm gonna go here just because monel's is not touristy so i no. think you would actually see look there's a spot you walk that's, that's into that's literally the house you walk in there you, you walk into there. that and place it's, it's and like they, it's like lunch tables yeah and so you'll be sitting next to a person you don't even know how do you spell that monel's m-o-n-e-l-l yes. and it, it'll hopefully it'll figure it out after that <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's a monel's there's probably an s in there i go yeah to monel's. see look you can tell though you go sit right up in there i'm sure everybody's saying i love you there M-O- it's cool too. And if you double gonna, L, mm-hmm. yeah, double M-O-N-E-L-L-F. L, any L O F. Yep. No free shout outs, Manels. We better see that check. What is uh, what is NFL films have you doing out here? We're uh, doing a feature on AJ Brown. Oh, he's having, he's having a phenomenal Love season. Love Juan. He made the Pro Bowl this year. I don't. I don't know yet. No, I'm saying, do you think he makes the Pro Bowl this year? That's a question. Know. It's impossible. All the all the receivers are doing well. Look at the stats of all the receivers. That yeah, are doing well right. right. He's had nine touchdowns in eight games. He has a uh, nickname that we've given him. Arthur. And since you're going to be featuring him, this would be I'm gonna phenomenal. Use it. I'm gonna use it. Arthur Juan Kenobi. Arthur Juan Kenobi. His, his Are you name a Star Wars Juan. guy? His name is Juan. His name AJ is Arthur Juan. Right. And so Juan. we're playing off of a Star oh, Wars character. We're staying. We're we're playing off a Star Wars character, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Kenobi. Yeah. yeah I know that. So now, we call him Arthur to, Juan you Kenobi. You have to know that this is this was something that Will decided is going to be. Like well, I think our he next probably thinks it's dope. No, I think he doesn't like it. Arthur Obi Wan. Okay. I'm not Star Wars guy. Hang on, hang on. Obi Wan Kenobi has a rat tail. Arthur Juan Kenobi, he's got his little, he calls it a Gucci tail. So I think it's, I think it's like a no brainer. Beautiful teeth in the kid. Get some t-shirts made. You know what I mean? Just always thinking. Nine touchdowns in eight games. Uh, Who else in the AFC is doing that? Yeah, go, he'll, he'll tell. Yeah. Who else is? I mean, look at some of the AFC receivers. It's it's right there. I mean, uh, it's up there. Tyreek Hill. I'm just gonna go off my DK's my head. going crazy. DK's in the NFC though. Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs, he'll make the Pro Bowl. Um D Hop is NFC too, right? Yep. Yeah, he's he NFC. He just left. That's Will a big, Fuller that's a big is win. Houston. Fuller's not gonna make it. He just got popped for a PED. Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. He runs good routes, right? He's solid. Superb routes. Superb routes. 
He kills dudes. Bronte, now is he having what's his numbers like? Oh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think it's up there. I'm not sure. I but he has a name. Well. Would you say if I said Keenan Allen or AJ Brown, just from a name? Well, it would obviously be. Keenan It'd be Keenan. Allen, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. I'd say. I mean, Tyreek Hill obviously is gonna make the Pro Bowl. He had 200 yards in one quarter. It's unbelievable. Uh, and he's got a, he's got a big name. Stephon Diggs is another one. Keenan Allen could be another one. How many receivers did they take the Pro Bowl? Four? Three? Uh, I mean, I, I think no four. Clue. Four? I, remember. I think he's in it then. If they take four, if they take three, it's like, okay, well, well he's got to be know, strong. Maybe another year to get your name out there. Because you know it is a big name game. If yeah. you got the name, this, that, and the other. And if you got, you got to put up the numbers too. Yeah. Somewhat. No question. But you got dudes. Um, if he finishes the year strong, I mean, yeah, he's got a real good shot. Well, voting's now. Those last two games don't count. Those last two games oh, don't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until like, what, so the he's 17th got, or he's something? He's got three more games. I think he's, I, I love AJ. He's a great teammate, too. Like, the, the way, when he's around, he's infectious. He's, he's for the most part, pretty happy. You know? Yeah, oh, he yeah, was acting awesome. a little weird this in the beginning of the year. That's he was AJ. throwing us through a loop. That's AJ. That's AJ. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now he's, he's AJ now. What's your, what are your thoughts on AJ? I like Ar- him. On Arthur Juan Kenobi. I, like I tweet him all the time. I wanted to give some smaller shoulder pads, though. Smaller, too big. Oh well, yeah, they're they're too big. He's a, he, like, hey, yeah, his like, shoulders. I'm are telling wide. you, his shoulders are actually. I mean, he's wide. he's. Wide. I wanted to get some fucking shoulder pads like Ed McCaffrey. Like, let the fucking gun pull show. that up. Yeah. Ed McCaffrey, I told him too. I said, hey, the guns were showing the shoulder pads like Michael Bennett, damn near. Yeah. You know. And his oh yeah, yeah. Trash, he, he basically put yeah. That. His shit does look trash, but I know what you're saying. Like the smaller, the better. The smaller yeah, shoulder just, pads, the just, actual bigger you look. Yeah, I'm with that. It looks like he's playing in the 50s almost. Right. Yeah, he does have some big pads on, but he's he a does. big cat. He's a big dude, man. His shoulders are very broad, and he's like it's like a triangle. Do you have a uh, Do you have a list of the best route runners? I'm sure people ask you that all the time. Um, no, I just who are so some of your when tops? I think about Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Calvin Ridley. Calvin uh, Ridley's like that. Yeah, uh, Terry McLaurin, Washington. He's a young. He's a stud too. Dude, second year player. He's special. Jerry Judy. You like him? Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy. Louis See, with Alabama. He's for Bron- he the Broncos. Denver. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, we played the Okay, year. okay, okay. I know you're talking about. Amari Cooper. I mean, it's, it's, it's so many. It's so many, but I mean, the, the top two to me, obviously to me, are Devontae Adams and Keenan Allen. They are the and one mixtape of running routes and creativity and just <laughs> like embarrassing you yeah. at the line one on one. Like both of, the, both of them brought you to tears and watching their routes? Yeah. It's it's a sight to see. And it's hard for people, the casual fan, really won't understand it. They'll just call out other big names of receivers who put up big numbers, but you won't understand the art and creativity of what they do. How did they compare to you? Well, it's only one Ocho. That is true. Yeah. Only one Ocho. Bang, only one bang. eight is what he just said. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you think about it, that doesn't make very much sense, does it? <laughs> There's only one eight. The boy is at it again with getting a portrait made of waffle. I got a portrait made for my mom for Christmas. I wanted to get a portrait of my sweet little English bulldog waffle. Shout out waffle. I love you very much. She is an absolute stud. And I discovered getting this portrait made at paintyourlife.com. Um, a proud sponsor of busting with the boys. Paintyourlife.com, you're able to go get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price. Choose from a team of world-class artists and work with them until every detail is perfect. It's a very user-friendly platform that lets you do uh, and have custom orders, hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. It's a very quick and easy process. You get a hand-painted portrait in about three weeks. Send a send any picture of yourself, your children, your family, your pet, a special place, a moment, or combine all these photos into one painting. It makes for a perfect birthday, anniversary, or wedding gift. Valentine's Day is coming up, so maybe you look at doing it for Valentine's Day. It's meaningful, personal, and can be cherished forever. Um, again, I got one made for my mom at Christmas. I was blown away by the quality. I'm now going back to them to get a portrait made of my sweet little waffle. And here's what the boys have to offer at paintyourlife.com. There's absolutely no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded guaranteed. And right now as a limited time offer from the boys, get 20% off your painting. That is right. 20% off and free shipping to get this special offer. Text the word boys, B O Y S. That's boys to 64,000. Again, text boys to 64,000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. 
Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Was it, um, I've heard you say that the first two years of playing in the league, you slept at the stadium. Yeah. I mean, I've been to that Cincinnati, so I know it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's only the stadium facility. It's all one thing. Yeah, the players lounge. But is this something that was happening every day or yeah. you only stayed there every I now and then? I don't want to spend any money. I oh. fucking love that, dude. Oh, that that fire so where, where were you set up at? The players lounge. The players lounge has everything. You got your gaming, you got your couches, you got blankets, you got pillows. So you slept you know, on the couch? Yeah. You didn't get like a cot or something? No, expensive ass couch. You flush, you know, for the fat guys, the big boys. Perfect. Perfect. Everything free. You got water, you got food, you got cafeteria. What am I getting a place for that they have to pay rent for and I got to stay there rent free? Parking lot. If I'm it's hungry, always a plus when I'm buying a place yeah. at the parking lot. If I'm hungry, lot. leave the stadium, go, put my code back in, come back in. It's like everything. So why'd you leave? Oh, Marvin Lewis and Hugh Jackson made me get a place. They said you have this time? Yeah. My third year. God. They made me get a place. Hell, I stayed at my grandma's house in Miami where I grew up as a kid until my fifth year in the league. Every off season? I went home. When I went home to Miami, I'm still living in the same house with my grandma. And I once I made I'm like... Listen, we can move now. We can move out of here. And she'd rather stay there because of the memories and nostalgia. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, are you serious? So Beautiful she wanted thing. to remain in, in that area. I say, fuck it. Okay. Well, I'll stay here too. What am I getting the fucking house for? I do love that. I do love that. Every, um, every all says <laughs> I'd stay at my, at my parents' place just in the off season, but not. Don't not try to, don't season. try to compare yourself. Um, I said I not, no, I said not during season. <laughs> Taylor doesn't know about being frugal. I am actually a very frugal person. Everything I'm wearing was free. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I'm wearing is free. That that so that is yours true. Yours cost yeah. forty dollars. Mine costs yeah. zero. So yeah. so far, I'm winning the game. Right? Urban urban out, urban out, urban outfitters have a sale going on right now. So do they off the sale rack? I just put it together. That's why I don't fucking match. It's a nice little deal. I think you, you match just fine. I think it looks good. I think I you know. Around. I think you know what you're doing. Yeah, I like it. I just threw some shit together. You know what? You're very tactical. You you definitely are a chess player of life. It's not like. You like to come off as, uh, well, you know, I just kind of do whatever. And the, but you're definitely, I feel like you are very, like, you steps throughout the day. You know what you're doing. And you've done a great job of it. Uh-huh. He said, yeah. Somewhere. yeah. Premeditated. Very premeditated. Times, you're solid, yeah. Sometimes. It has to be. It's just, you just can't go all willy-nilly. See, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants guy for the most part. I've had to tame it back a little bit having kids now, but I've definitely been more of a willy-nilly than a, a tactical force. But I tell you what, being around you makes me want to be more tactical. It's kind Works. of that's that's what you're bringing to the table. Works. You're influencing me. I'm 29 years old. Gotta try it. I will. <laughs> I will. I'll do that now. <laughs> I um, just so much work. It's so I feel like it's a lot of work, but it seems not, like it's not. It's easy. And you do what you want to. Like you've answered your phone and tweeted on this on this program. Oh man, and he's done that's it smooth. Speaking, hey, he's done it smooth enough. too. Hey, he's been smooth about it too. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Monel's hits, doesn't it? Smoking thighs, absolutely, or breakfast. Somebody say, yes, you won't be disappointed. Oto is one of the best here. Yes. Somebody said McDonald's. Oh, you're cheating on McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, Hattie B's. Has McDonald's, um, like, given you, like, you know how at Happy Gilmore they, they give you a card? Did something, card? I did something with McDonald's in 05 through 07. That's is that good. when you... Uh, I can't even remember. I can't remember. You were, I know there's one time where you want to do, you would drive up and ask for an application in case oh, his other job didn't work you out. Just, you never fucking know. Excuse me. Yes. Can I have an application also? You can get it at the first, the second window. Thank you. You never know when I might lose my job. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing like a, what was that called? It's like an NFL films thing where they're following him around. Hard knocks. And he's talking about how much he like works out and then he'll go to the drive thru and he back. Can I get an application? <laughs> He pull up. You never know when the other one's not going to work out. Saying that he already said that. Yeah, I love that. Somebody fucking mentioned Morton's. What the fuck is Morton's? It's a Morton's is a chain steakhouse. Chain steakhouse. Chain steakhouse. Okay. 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 Yeah. No. No free shout outs. Morton's. Morton's. Yeah. And Saturday, obviously, after film, I'm going to famous country place. What's the name of it? Honky Tonk. No. Uh, it's down on Broadway. Yeah. It's a tizzies. Something that has to do with the country singers and it's famous. It's I mean, when you come to the Ryman? Nashville, everybody country music hall of fame. No, it's the Ryman or it's, um, Johnny cash museum. No, God damn it, <laughs> it's a restaurant. no, it's a concert hall. He's talking uh, about, there's the Ryman that's just off the, off Broadway. Right. Yeah. And then what's the place that was over it's, at, uh, I can't, 
Right oh, by the mall. It's literally the name of the mall. Opry? Grand Ole Opry. Grand Opry. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I have to go Grand there tomorrow. I've never been there. I have to go there tomorrow. And that's so that's how the piece is going to go. So in Jacksonville, we did James Robinson. We featured him. Rookies having a great fucking Yeah, he's season. doing well. And um, I went fucking golfing at TBC Sawgrass, of course. And I sucked. So that was half of the film. And the rest was James Robinson, you know, playing against the Browns. So tomorrow I'm going to... What is it? Grand Ole Opry. Library. I don't... Yeah, so I'm going to do that. And then the other half will be what A.J. Brown does against the Browns. You think you're going to get their autographs? Him and Corey Davis? Yeah, I, I fucking scream and heckle all the players every time. <laughs> That's good. Every time they come out of the tunnel. Really? Yeah. Oh, ask, A.J.'s going to love that. I ask for a ball with some funny shit. Yeah. I saw you tell AJ you should need to throw a ball at him. He'll pay the fine. He retweeted, so he'll probably throw one before the game. Can't no. find him for that. You should throw one during <laughs> the game. You said you pay the fine. I would. It's only seven grand. See, so now we're that's a lot of money. Well, not really, because remember, I'm a mule for the cartel, so my money's coming in different. <laughs> yeah, no, it's he's tax got free. he's got different pockets. Heavy yeah, pockets. Tax no, free. that's that's absolutely how it goes. Um, one of my Grand Ole Opry. I've never been to the Grand Ole Opry, but when I first got drafted here, um, they were like, hey. It was during OTAs, so I'm like trying to learn the playbook, and they're like, Willie Nelson is going to introduce you at the Grand Ole Opry, and I mean, I was like, I'm a big Willie fan, and I fucking said, no, 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 I need to stay here and study my playbook. What? Biggest regret of my life. I would have took my fucking playbook with me. I'll tell you what, I fucked up. Look at me in the eyes. I fucked up. That's just life. Willie Nelson? The king. I'll tell you what. You said no for early. Just if I had a drug test tomorrow, and Willie Nelson was like, smoke this with me. I don't care if it's PCP. I'm smoking that with <laughs> Willie Nelson. Do you know what I'm saying? Just because that's how much you regret He's that a le- Dude, Willie Nelson is a, f- is a legend. Doesn't there's seem like you understood step. that, though, there's, when there's you said no. Things. Hmm? Doesn't seem like you understood that at the time you said <laughs> no. no. I, He's like saying he is a fucking legend. I'd smoke I PCP with him. It's like, I didn't appreciate I thought, oh, more opportunities will pop up. I'll be fine. Like, I've been here for four days. Like, this is already what's happening? Yeah. I haven't had one fucking call about Willie Nelson since. <laughs> I, 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 I messed up everything. There's certain things in life that you just don't turn down. Mm-hmm. Certain opportunities that present themselves that will never come about again that like, you just can't turn down. Like busting with the boys. You you took you advantage turn, of this you opportunity. Turn this down. Like I had the opportunity to stay in my room and have sex with multiple women in Tennessee that sent me their vagina in right. my DM. Yep. And where am I? You're with, I'm the, boys. with the boys. I'm fucking bust with the boys. Because you're for the boys. Fuck the vagina. <laughs> you don't need it. For it's what? just taking food off your plate. We've already exactly. talked about this. See what? You know if what anything, is? we're good listeners. You know what else the, the vagina is? What's that? It's a fucking added expense. <laughs> it's an added expense. And if anybody giving to you free, it's not that fucking good. <laughs> Look at all of them back there. <laughs> all of them back there like at class just now. Yeah, they're like this. You know the thing about the vagina? They're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly if, right. If she says, oh, I'm not a prostitute, you're paying indirectly <laughs> in some kind of way. Dinner, flowers. Chocolates. Some chocolate. You know, <laughs> movies. Go-karts. Netflix. Anything. Candy. Postmates again eventually. Chocolates. Oh, they said chocolates, but you know what I'm saying. Some some way. You're We're paying back. indirectly. Johnny Cash Museum, which is... You shouldn't go. Fucking Johnny. I want to talk a little bit about your uh, new, your platform, I Am Athlete. Hey, that, you, that's Brandon Marshall's. You do that, yeah, with I Brandon Marshall, Fred Taylor, and... Shannon Crowder. Shannon Crowder, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. What uh when did that when did that start Listen, happening? This is season two for them. And I did the beginning of season two, Brandon asked me to come by and just be on. Yeah. And Reggie Wayne was on there, Fred Taylor and Shannon and Brandon. And he, I I would just a guess. Talked about the Hall of Fame. We talked about some other things. Did so well. The jump and oh, Brandon was like, dude. Gotta, you gotta come. We need 85. I was like, um, cool. What days? Because I have other things I have going on. You know, on other days. I have a show with Kyle Long and NFL and Twitch called Twitch Sports. Um, Wednesdays. And I said, if we can do it as long as I can finish this first, then I can come film with you guys after. The timing worked out and we've been going strong ever since. And now it, it's doing well, especially well. In, in the YouTube space, for sure. I like it. I really enjoy it. And that's out of my. That's in Miami. In Miami yeah, in Miami. I like it it's a similar, lot. It's similar. To, it's similar type, type of platform. They just kind of talk about just they're just raw, and they talk about some shit on there. <laughs> Important stuff, you know. Right. 
the stuff, politics. We touched on everything, you know, race, religion, politics, football. Hairy stuff. Those three things you just said were hairy. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, very touchy shit. It's nice sometimes to fucking play a little gray area, hit the boundaries a little bit. And you all have different views and opinions, yeah. so that's what makes it, like, yeah. entertaining. You can actually speak your mind. And we when they we let it rip. Oh, here we go, boys. This is a good one. Perfect timing for Valentine's Day coming up. And for a lot of guys, that can mean added pressure to perform. Luckily, with Roman, you can relax. Whether you're dealing with ED or you're more concerned about lasting longer in bed, Roman's got you covered. For a limited time, Roman has special offers to make sure you're ready for Valentine's Day. Get up to $35 off your first month of ED treatment if prescribed. And if you purchase swipes, you'll get a free bottle of lube added to your order. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. One less thing you have to worry about on Valentine's Day. Complete your online visit by February 10th for guaranteed delivery by Valentine's Day. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Bussin to get started. That's GetRoman.com slash Bussin. B-U-S-S-I-N. Get ready for Valentine's Day, boys. Perform better in bed with Roman. You don't obviously care what people get mad about this opinion or that opinion. That doesn't bother you at all. No, and I never gave a fuck. Yeah, that's smart. It's good to do that. It's hard. I feel like it's harder to do that now with all the stuff, the social media and all that. It's more difficult to ignore those things. I mean, it's there in your face, but it's still easy to ignore. It's one off a duck's back. You know, mm-hmm. we had a guy on the on the podcast. His name's Brandon Shop. The guy, he's a great comedian, and he has a few podcasts. He does a lot of good work, and he brought that up. How he just he has social media, has thousands of followers, and he just puts something out there, and then he doesn't look comments or anything. He just does his thing. That's that's admirable because it's hard to do when you're in you're in the middle of your career and you're trying to figure out like how good can I be? This you kind of want to get gassed up a little bit once in a while. Yeah, you go check them things. You go check a little. Put your name in the old search engine. Right. And you see nine great things about yourself, but that one bad thing, you're like, these motherfuckers, they don't fucking get it, do they? It's always like that. I think for me, it's, it's extremely easy because I already had that mentality from growing up mm-hmm. and not giving a fuck. So the carry on, once I got to the NFL, I still had the same mentality of not giving a fuck. Obviously, I love playing into the villain role. And right. The media portrayed me as, and I loved it. I loved the persona, and it, that's all it was. So people seem to confuse the two. Person like person, yeah, this is me. That's just that's that's an that's an act, act, marketing, the whole you know the whole nine yards. Right. So I like it, and just not giving a fuck. Because if I cared, then I would have stopped doing what I was doing a long time ago. Once the media, uh, I lay on my ass for mm-hmm. everything. Was there anything you wish you hadn't done? And if I could do it again, I'd do it the same way and plus some. When uh, I love that. when you transitioned from the Bengals to the Patriots, what was that like? When you're when you're you're up here, like Chad Ochocinco, you're doing all this stuff. You're celebrated. You are you were the Cincinnati Bengals, and then you start to transition and realize that damn, you know, at the end of the day, well, business, that, business is business, right? Uh, take us through that well transition. Going. I mean, it was easy because you already know it's, a, it's an organization that doesn't play that shit and doesn't really need you, right? Once you get there, you walk in that door, the atmosphere, you understand that you're expendable at that point. Your commodity. No matter who you are. Unless you're that centerpiece, which was 12, that makes that train run, makes that whole train function. Because the pieces to the puzzle in in New England change constantly. Think about it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But one piece the remains one. the same. Yeah. Quarterback spot. But everything else around him, it shuffles year in and year out. Year in and year out. But they continuously win. Matter who's there, and so it was, it was. It was. It was a tough spot. I enjoyed it. I, obviously, I wasn't as productive as I'd like. But hell, me, Wes Welker, Aaron Hernandez, Gronk, Edelman. I mean, where the fuck did I fit in anyway? It's not like I had a choice. I think if I had a choice, would I have chose to go to New England? Probably fucking not. <laughs> Probably not. No, because it just it wasn't a great fit for me. Even though, oh my God, you get to play with the greatest quarterback of all time. Yes. But as you see, right, right, I don't really need you, but you're here, big name, eh? Could you have stayed at uh, Cincinnati? I could have, but I'm not sure how the business side of things work. But that's not what they wanted. So, and what I'm going to say? Oh my God, I don't want to go to fucking New England. Right. You didn't have any other places that wanted you. Sure, but they traded 
Oh, that's oh, right. That's right. You shit, got yeah. traded. That's right. That's a lot of. Is people. that when you started to figure out that you were a commodity, or you had had no, that been something just, you already understood understand. the whole time? Yeah, yeah, it for works. sure. See, I told I told John Robinson he traded Darrell Darrell Casey this past year in the offseason to the Broncos, and Darrell's been here forever. He made five Pro Bowls here. Did he, has done a great job for this team. He's a good dude. So I pulled him over during camp. I said, John, if you fucking trade me, that's a D tackle, right? He has a D yeah, tackle. D-tackle. Yes. So the GM 98, 98, 99. Yep. Oh, 99. Okay. 99. Yeah, yeah. So Jarrell, Jarrell got traded to the Broncos. So I pulled John to the side during camp. I said, John, I love you to death, but if you trade me, do not send me somewhere cold. Just make sure you send me somewhere warm. That's all I care about. So he agreed. So John, <laughs> this is agreed. fucking out here now. So if I ever get traded to somewhere cold, I'll be pissed. Going to Buffalo or something, or the Patriots. <laughs> do you think, um, obviously, the Patriots being what they were, and then Tom leaving... And then Cam coming in. Because once Cam went there, you were like, oh, they're going to be right back where they left off. Right. Were you surprised about kind of how it hasn't been necessarily that this year? Because they can still make the playoffs, right? Do they have much of a season, off season. In no, I mean, it's COVID. No. Yeah. That's I think all that way. matters. Yeah. Being able to, to jail with your teammates, work out an off season. I think all that matters. I think next year would be a little different. I'm hoping maybe they allow him to another year mm-hmm. well, he was only he's only on a one year Even right though he's on a one year i, mean, I think I mean, he'll just, people are saying he'll still be there from what i see right right it's but smart it's I mean, new england's in the driver's seat as far as business contractually because it's like you know cam wanted to have a hell of a year because he gets to he gets to go back to the bank and re-up big time right, right. And so when it's not going perfectly it's like the patriots know that when they give him an off season he'll probably flourish but as far as like leverage and business like i'm sure no, it's, it's, It'll be interesting. You never know with them, though. Mm. You never know with the Patriots. But is there a better, better option at this point than Cam? But giving Cam a full off season to work with everyone, you know, from offensive standpoint, right? A better place for him to go? No, I mean, it's just as far as the opportunity again, yeah, to try it again, a, a full season under his belt with the offense and understanding the scheme, understanding what he has around him. He's a stud too. They need to get more pieces there too. Go so, ahead. what all are you into now? You do NFL films. You got a uh, I am athlete now. I am athlete with Brandon. I have an NFL Twitch show with Kyle Long on Wednesdays. Hell, I'm the ratings adjuster for EA. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, that shit's funny with just the receivers. Oh, everybody, players, and just five players every every week. Not a lot of old linemen on that Madden adjuster. Tell you what, we need we that. need to get the boy taken care of. Yeah, my shit's terrible. Yeah, he's, he's been like he's, play Madden, so. he's been like low eighties every year. I know. You know what I'm saying? Three time Pro Bowl. We need a little bit more respect on, on my man's name. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Please. I don't need to be good in real life. I just need to be good in the game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> it's always awesome. nice when you got a decent rating. Yeah, eighty four. We got boosted to a sixty nine. You, you actually got that? boosted. I, th- I saw the yeah. tweet. Somebody <laughs> said. I want, thank you. Thank you. I went from a 68 to a 69. Fuck around. You know what I'm saying? How'd that happen? Falling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. Well, fuck, man. I tell you what, this has been a cool a cool experience. Um, always knew who you were, knew your personality, but never, like, truly followed. I'm definitely a fan now. That's that's shit. pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool to have you on, and I know Will's been a big fan for a while. When, oh, when you said you were coming on? I called. I almost made Will not go, but I call called Will and he's stoked, dude. And so yeah. I, we appreciate you coming, man. Not a lot of Thank people. Will take I need, I, I actually brought a cigar. I'm gonna have you sign it, bro. Because so, yeah. <laughs> when I was on, when I was about to come, so here's what we got. Appreciate you coming on, busting with the boys. I'm about to get this autograph. Everybody, go subscribe, rate five stars, give raving reviews. You can follow us, busting five w- stars. W- WTB, busting WTB. We also have a YouTube channel, busting with the boys. But share this episode. Yell from the mountaintop. We had Chad Ochocinco on. Thank you very much for coming on.